Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. It's today very excited to check out What's Good New, the three-letter learning game from Think Fun. This is ages five to eight. It's for uh, two to six players, and it'll take, I don't know, about 15, 20 minutes to play. And in What's Good New, you're going to try to get the most of these tiles right here. And these tiles are going to have one letter on it and then two blank spots. Why they have that is because you're going to pass this around the table, and you're going to be sliding out letters and trying to spell things using the two letters and one of these. If you're the first person to complete the spell, you get this, which is worth a point. First with the most points is the winner of the game. But it also plays cooperative and uh, competitive as well. Uh, so let's open that up before we do that. If you want to help support the channel and make the channel better, better audio, video, please support considering the Patreon down below. Uh, please consider supporting the Patreon down below. But let's open up What's Good New. <laughs> All right, then. We're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of What's Good New. So, uh... First and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule booklet. It is one page, double sided, full color. Well, no, black and white. And it's well done. Should have you up and running in no time at all. There's a, co -op, a competitive game and a cooperative game. I'll be talking mostly about the competitive game, but the cooperative game is really just more of a, uh, a learning tool to use with kids, which is still fun. I have played that, and I'll talk more about that in the pros and cons. So, in what's new, you are going to be trying to get the most of these tiles out here. And uh, this is not all the tiles. There's a whole bunch over here you can't even see. And it actually takes up a good deal of table space. But you're going to set out all these tiles. And all these tiles are going to be three letter words that have not been spelled yet. And how it's going to work is one person is going to be the slider first, or they can do it every time. It doesn't really matter. They're going to slide it out. Oh, I'm a new. <laughs> slide it out and then they have to try and spell a word and everyone has to try and spell this word as fast as they could so i'd say sip and boom s i p i take those i put all this in front of me that's essentially one point you really can just keep that uh and then you go again and then you pass the next person kw so i'll say uh walk yeah, I think that's a word. I think that's how you spell it. Now, if I was wrong and that was not how you spelled it, you actually don't get the point and you lose your next turn. So you don't get an answer. So, RT. I'm sure there's a rat. Uh, but let's pretend that there was not a rat, that there was a way that you could not answer this question. Like right now, I don't think you can answer it. You could say rot. Whatever. Uh, so what this happens is both these letters go face down. They go over here. And eventually, there'll be, uh, at least if there's a, four letters there, at the end of the game, once this has completely ran out of things, because that's when the game is going to end when this has run out of things, uh, you can flip these over, and you can try to do stuff with that. And then once these are gone, you will tally the points, and whoever has the most of these will be the winner of the game. And that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to do inside of What's Good New. Alright then, what's gonna do from Think Fun? What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the cons, that game's not gonna be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. The biggest reason, right, ages five to eight, and I definitely think that is right. And for some kids, it might be ages six to eight, depending on when they really start uh, kindergarten, when they start learning how to spell. Uh, hopefully it's, you know, uh, not for older than that, but for some kids, it could be. A couple kids I've met. Um, those kids that are really, really low. So I think if you have nine, 10, 11, 12 year old, uh, maybe, I hope not 12, but let's not, let's not discriminate here. If you have a 9, 10, 11, or 12 or older kid who is having difficulty spelling, especially small words, this would be an absolute great game to get them. But that's for the pros. We're talking about the cons. Naughty, naughty. Continuing on with the con side. Games are repetitive. You do the same thing over and over again. Biggest con that I have with this game is that it's hard to play with kids without, I mean, you obviously have to um, slow down. You cannot. And what I ended up doing was I would find one, and then I would wait a second, wait a couple seconds, no one found it, and then I said, all right, I'm going to give you a clue. And then, so let's, for instance, say the word was rug. Uh, I would go, ooh, I love rubbing my feet on this. Or, woof, 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 it was dog or something like that. And then that also turned it into a little bit more of the game with the kids. There's a little pro teacher tip for you. But yeah, if you're playing as an adult, you are going to have to find some sort of way to make it more entertaining for yourself and closer, more, uh, more competitive game. Any other cons? No, not really. I mean, you know, it's it's only going to be for a very specific age range, but they tell you that right on the box, which I think is big ups to think fun. Some companies wouldn't do that. They say ages five plus and just leave you hanging. They're like, ages five to eight. If you got a 10-year-old who can spell, don't buy this game. Uh, so big ups to them. But moving on to the pros, uh, I enjoy Think Fun's What's Good New, and I'm going to go as far as to say this is a great game for a very specific audience. Um, if you are a teacher or you work with kids routinely or your kids are learning to spell or are having trouble spelling, this is an outstanding game, period. 
end this review. Go well, actually run it out so I get a couple more cents or a penny. And actually, it's not even gonna be a penny. Like a ch small chunk of a penny more. Uh, but go out and buy this game. Just period. End of the conversation. End of the discussion. This is a spectacular learning game, and this is one of the best learning games that I think I've really played that the kids really, really like. The other big thing that I really like about this game is it's a children's game. Now, when I make this, I say children's game versus family game. Family game is a game that is a game that kids can play, but they still need the adults around to help them teach the rules and learn the rules and all that sort of stuff. A kids game is a game that once they're taught the rules, and then maybe they played it a couple times with mom or dad or whoever, they can play it by themselves and they can teach other kids how to play the game. For instance, Uno, obviously minus the scoring, uh, games like that, games that kids can teach other kids, and I think this is a excellent, a great children's educational game. So that's why I'm giving this an 8. For everybody else outside that spectrum, no. Psh. You got a 10-year-old who can spell well, uh, if your kids are too young, uh, psh, you don't routinely, if you're looking at this more as a game, and less of as an educational tool, keep on walking. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's what's new from Think Fun. It looks like it might be a cup of tea, then absolutely get it. Can't recommend it enough. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, click on that little Amazon Associates link down below. And in the comments below, let me know, do you have any memories of any educational games you ever played? For me personally, I actually have one really stinking cool one, which was, I believe it was, yeah, I think it was 8th? No, it was freshman year. I had this history teacher. No, it might have been 8th grade. Yeah, I was playing football. Uh, no, uh, I don't know. It was eighth grade, and he was the history teacher. Uh, he was also a football coach, and he uh, made it so that he made pretty much the Oregon Trail game in his room to help teach us about the Oregon Trail and the hardships and what they had to go through. And it was actually uh, the room. He actually used another room nearby and connected the two. Like he asked her to like go outside for the day, I guess. So they, they took out this this wall they had, this foldable wall, and it was like this huge thing was set up where there was different base camps and different this and different that. Uh you had to like go across a river they had made. It was really in depth, really elaborate and really uh one of those events that I, I look at because I'm really fascinated in history now. Uh and say, yeah, that, that might have been one of the points where I really was getting into it. And uh that's that's the effect that great teachers can have. Interesting kids in history and keeping the hopefully so they can learn from the mistakes. But let me know in the comments below. Uh, what the hell? What was that question? Whatever the question was. So always thanks for your time, YouTube.